Less than a week from the Walt Disney shareholders meeting, another proxy firm has come out, this time endorsing Nelson Peltz. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place. And here with me is co-defendant Vash Guy. Vash, how you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. We're 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 gonna get we're gonna get comfortable here as uh, co-defendants. This is gonna be this is gonna be fantastic. Oh, it's um, gonna be. <laughs> oh yes, it's gonna be great. But uh, in the meantime, let's talk about uh, this article out of Deadline. They don't own this news, but they are reporting on it. So we want to say thank you to Dade Hayes for getting into this one. In Disney proxy battle, a second advisory firm backs activist investor Nelson Peltz. Uh, which one of these people do they, they do they like? Uh, well, just take a look at their uh, selection of pictures here. Here is a picture of Bob Iger talking where he doesn't look bad. And here's a picture of Nelson Peltz where uh, his mouth's hanging open just a little bit. He's looking a little orange, too. Okay, that's if that, that's that. very true. They took two different lighting situations and they hmm. merged them together. Proxy advisor Egan Jones on Wednesday became the second independent firm to support activist Nelson Peltz's effort to secure seats on the Disney board. The endorsement follows that of ISS earlier this month, this month rather, which was a notable win for Peltz's Tryon Fund Management as it is the biggest advisory firm and highly influential. Yes, that uh, that's true. I've heard that they, they cover one third of all proxies uh, in the institutional game, but uh, that's, uh, that's secondhand knowledge here. While ISS backed Peltz alone, Egan Jones is supporting both the billionaire activist and former Disney executive, Jay Rasulo, Tryan's other nominee to the Disney board. The firm is recommending shareholders withhold for Mary Alina Lagamasino and Michael B.G. Froman, who are members of Disney's slate of nominees. Uh, Mary Alina Lagamasino is the uh, compensation committee chair and michael bg froman is the head of the council on foreign relations and uh, one of the few people that the walt disney company will actually admit has a uh, personal relationship of some kind with bob Iger. although one of my sources uh put that whole uh no personal relationship slide that disney uh released uh, he kind of kind of poked a hole in that one he said can you please define personal relationship yes <laughs> yes that's are they that's... best friends probably not <laughs> right right um <laughs> just putting a blanket statement uh, over those things doesn't necessarily resolve uh, shareholder questions right there for sure i i i this is very interesting because for a few reasons one is the institutional shareholder services as you just read right there didn't necessarily uh, uh recommend both nelson peltz and jay rasulo but uh, Egan Jones is supporting both Jay Rasulo and Nelson Peltz. I think it's a, it's a distinction right there that should be noted for sure. Yes, uh, and and ISS said that uh, Rasulo might have been more of an issue because of their disagreements between Iger and Rasulo in the past. With uh, obviously Rasulo, he wasn't fired, but he did leave the company after uh, after they kind of pulled the rug out from under him and said, right. no, it's Tom Staggs who's the next person who's not going to be the CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Uh, and and so Jay Rasulo, uh, third in line to not be the CEO of the Walt Disney Company, uh, decided to leave and pursue other endeavors. And now he's back offering what Disney has never had, which is a, well, not had for a very long time, at least. I haven't I, I, I can't say this st is strictly true, but I don't know of anyone in the theme park business who has ever been on the board of the Walt Disney Company. Even though it accounts for most, you know, almost all of their profit, at least right now, and a lot of their revenue. So that's, right, right. that's a weird thing not to have a voice in the room there from a guy who's who's done it for. Right. Uh, of course, uh, management employees of uh, the Walt Disney Company notwithstanding there. Disney sure. shareholders' votes will be tallied at the company's annual meeting next Wednesday. We see very little downside and a lot of upsides in putting the try-in nominees on the board, Egan Jones said in, in the announcement. Uh, the firm cited an apparent lack of a long-term succession plan in a board that appears cut off and unwilling to engage with investors and the broader market. No. Well, you said it. Uh, no. the, this is this is opinion here, and I'm clearly marking this as opinion. Uh, and Disney, you're you're free to disagree with me in a in in your classic style of calling people inane and oblivious when they disagree with you. Uh, the Walt Disney Company has never made a mistake that they are aware of, as far as the Walt Disney Company is concerned. Uh, so, 
<laughs> you know, they should have bought Fox uh, un un until until you fire a CEO uh, and and then you need to blame him for all of the problems that were done by that CEO under the superv supervision of the current CEO who's just come back in. That's when you can admit that someone made a mistake, but it definitely wasn't Bob Iger. Right. Right. Am I right? Oh, uh, what, what Bob? Uh, that's that's that's, uh, you know, that that's what that's what he'll tell you. Uh, it, it was it was it was Bob Chapek. He did it or it was the board. Ah, oh, what am I going to do? Right. Uh, this board, I, I, I thought uh, Andre from Midnight Sedge just summed this up perfectly when he said that this board hasn't necessarily been a check on Bob Iger. It's more, it, it, it's been a little more like a shield for Bob Iger and his destructive decisions that have led the company where it is today. Right. Um, right. It, it, it works well when Bob Iger needs to do what he's doing and he's correct, but that begs the assumption that Bob Iger is always correct. And I don't think that that has been the case across the board paying $70 billion for Fox. And yes, there are some adjustments in there for, uh, selling off the regional sports networks, even though Disney tried to hold on to those uh, until antitrust said they couldn't. I, this is something that, you know, is, is there zero question on whether or that, not that merger was a good thing? Even David Zaslov over there at Warner Brothers Discovery fields a couple questions every now and then on whether or not Warner Brothers and Discovery uh, should have been merged. And he makes a better case for why they should have been merged because they were right. two media companies with complementary ideas, one being movie content, the other being an endless supply of uh, daytime television. Uh, not No no insult to the Discovery Channel there. Different animal than uh, the Warner Brothers side of things. But let's get back to uh, Disney. Egan Jones said the company's business model is built for the last decade, but not looking forward and flexible enough to ensure success in the next. The current board, it added, is characterized by a desire to protect the status quo for as long as possible and at all costs. Uh, Vash, how would you respond to that? <laughs> I'd say that's absolutely correct. I mean, look, think about what we've heard in the last month, just the last month alone. We have had endorsements from Jamie Dimon, the CEO of uh, J.P. Morgan Chase right here, George Lucas, Michael Eisner, Lorraine Powell Jobs, would have Steve Jobs, who was at one point the largest uh, individual shareholder uh, by a wide margin because of that Pixar deal right there, signed into 2009. Mason Morfitt, the family of the Walt Disney Company, including Abigail, who has been very, very critical <laughs> of of Bob Iger and the pay structures and so forth uh, associated with it. The 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 you know that also includes the grandchildren of Roy O. Disney, as I said, Abigail. Um, We've seen just at the, the last earnings call, the Epic Games move, Taylor Swift deal, Moana 2 being, you know, uh, taken from a, a Disney Plus series. And now that's going to have a November release date in theaters. I, you know, the, I mean, we, we've just seen so much from the Walt Disney Company trying to throw everything that they can at the wall in Nelson Peltz's description right there and seeing if something sticks. It, it, it appears cut off and unwilling to engage. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, a desire to protect the status quo as long as possible and at all costs. This is exactly the characterization of not only Bob Iger, but certainly the board right here. And it's got everybody wondering why. Why, why right. are you so dead set on protecting two board seats? That's what's really at stake here. Right. And and I'll also add, there's only two board members that I've heard comments from. One of them was from uh, James Gorman, formerly of Morgan Stanley, and him coming in. Uh, he talked about the succession process at Morgan Stanley. So I'm actually, I'm, I think that that's a good addition to the board. And he's good for the succession process because he pulled off something that most people can't do. They had three CEO candidates over at Morgan Stanley, and they had the, the guy who got the job, that's great. The other two right. stayed on to help the company. That is that is an amazing CEO succession process. But that guy being on the board does not fix the CEO succession process right. at this point because most of the people on that board, other than Mark Parker, when, when defending uh, Bob Iger, are silent. Uh, the board right. will speak together, which at that point, we assume that this is just Bob Iger's voice. And most of the... The sources that we have and the the writings that we've seen outside of this proxy fight have indicated that Bob Iger is essentially the entire board. So right. I'm not seeing much dissension here. These unanimous votes don't speak well to the idea that the board is pushing back against Bob Iger. Exactly. And and was it who responded on Disney's behalf to the institutional shareholder services 
uh, recommendations. It was Mark Parker. It was Mark Parker. Okay, yeah. So we've only really heard from two board members in this entire thing right here. That's a little unusual, especially if it's so important that Nelson Peltz and Jay Rasulo uh, don't get board seats in this next vote right here. Built for the last decade, but not forward-looking and flexible enough to ensure success in the next I think this is a kind of a perfect description. Uh, and it's right. it's kind of funny because that was something that Disney Company themselves were projecting onto uh, Jay Rasulo, right? Oh, it's, he's he's an analog clock at a digital age kind of thing. Right. Um, well, it, it, it seems to me that uh, some some old fashioned thinking uh, might set you up better for the upcoming years than this whole like, oh, we're a technology company. and We're doing all this uh, sort of business. Right. And, and I think the idea that Walt, the Walt Disney Company is a technology company is a is a tenuous idea at best right now. They have a streaming service, which uh, Warner Brothers has a streaming service that does not make them a technology company. Genie Plus does not make Disney a technology company unless bad technology makes you a technology company. And uh, n no matter what is thrown my way, I will never endorse Genie Plus unless they make that thing free, which uh, they won't because they're addicted to it. Uh, we'll talk right. about that more on the channel on another video, of course. And if George Lucas endorsing uh, Bob Iger right now is a statement that Star Wars is doing fine, yes, I would say that's a statement for the status quo and, uh, and, and maybe being blind to the fact that things need to change there at the Walt Disney Company. They don't have a fully functioning studio over there except for maybe fox but fox is not making them enough money to support what walt disney needs the sorry the Iger corporation needs to feed the ip holding company needs of the parks uh they can't right. go on like this forever and they really need change at the walt disney company and i'm i'm this is opinion here no financial advice but i feel like having nelson peltz on that board and on that succession committee would actually put a lot of shareholders at ease uh, in, in knowing that maybe it's not just going to be Bob Iger's rubber stamp for the next CEO of the Walt Disney Company. But that's just my opinion. Uh, we want to throw this out to the audience here. What is your opinion here? Is, is this second firm uh, coming out to support Nelson Peltz? Is this going to move the needle? Or is this just um, a, another blip on the path to April 3rd when the entire Disney board is confirmed for another year? Uh, we would love to know. And of course, uh, please like this video if it's been informative to you in any way or if you want to help out the channel. And consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.